Good evening. We had some pretty high winds here this evening. Wife says she heard it hailing one time, and I just wanted to show you what, how uh, pulling dirt up to your tomato plants or any plants for that matter, how it helps to keep them from snapping off or staying bent over forever, in other words. In other words, losing the crop. I got this dirt pulled up with my rake, and everything looks fairly well. And I'm thanking God for it. But as you can see, I'm trying to make the best of it. Everything looks fairly well, though. And I mean, it was some high winds that come through. I'm glad they're starting to bloom, and I'm getting a few little tomatoes starting to come on the vines on these older plants these new ones are just now starting to bloom i got some squash over there and they got a little squash on them and the good lord saved my plants for me one more time but i tell you pulling that dirt up he, he gives us knowledge you know on how to do things and I just believe this pulling dirt up to your plants is the best way to go. And don't hold back on the cow manure. <laughs> but I want to go on over here and I want to show you some more of my garden. There's a little squash plant. Got dirt pulled up in them. And wind didn't even get into them hardly. Their sun was coming on there, and I believe we're going to make a pretty good crop. And I know I've watched all these gardening shows about how to do and how not to do, and all I did was put out some, uh, put caramel manure out, a little bone meal here and there, and I didn't buy that expensive cow manure. I bought the cow manure compost. And it seems to be working just as well. I mean, everything is flourishing. But I have got a little fungus growing. My wife gave me some, gave me some fungicide to put on it. And it seems to be doing, they doing better. I mean, it's, it's still in places. I got a few leaves that's, See that one there is green back up. It's starting to change back to the green color. But Lord, it all these little squash. I'm just thanking God for it too, I guarantee. There's one trying to rot. Say it wasn't pollinated is the reason it does that. But I wanted to show you these Everything I got out here is celebrities except for, let's see, I've got like uh, 12 plants here that's not. And they are uh, early girls and big boys. And they are doing nothing but just making a bush, but they're, They've got plenty of blooms out of there too, though, but this foliage is unreal on them. How? And I'm starting to prune here and there. And there's a prune there I'm going to pick off. I'm going to do the first cluster today. And I'm going to see how that works out. If, if the foliage don't get real thick, or it makes nothing but foliage instead of tomatoes, I may go on up a little bit further with my pruning. But as of now, everything looks good. So I'm going to try to stay there. <coughs> Let's walk on over here and look at my corn. Pulled dirt up to it the other day, and my English peas, like I said, they was kind of skimpy, but I think they're going to do all right. 
We're gonna get a mess anyway, I pray. Got a pretty good row of them. As you can see, we got an abundant supply of rain today. My Lord. I thank him for it. My garden drains good. I thank you. Thank God for that. But these two rows here, I planted, well, I planted these first, these two rows here. They're peaches and cream. And I seem to love that. I love that variety. It's, it's a good tasting corn. It's easy to grow. But I went out and ventured out this year. That's my carrots. I got to pull dirt up and hold, the road, uh, hold that out, but don't look at them, okay? <laughs> uh, these two rows here are uh, ambrosia. This is ambrosia corn. And it's a yellow and white corn also. And I'm going to see how it does, see if it measures up to the peaches and cream. Which I think it will. I got me a, this year I got me a hot wire around my garden. Keep the pest out. Last year, the coons got more corn than I did, so I figured I'd put me a hot wire up this this year and uh, kind of detour them. Oh, and it's, it, it won't hurt them real. You know, it's just a, a tingle because it's like, for small animals, I don't have anything out here that that really hurt the animals, but it's just something to make them go away. And, and you know they just doing they just doing what's natural, so really can't hold that against them. But I really don't know any other way. If y'all have any tips, let me know on how to keep animals out of your garden and stuff like that we can talk back and forth and i love to hear your ideas as, and i hope you like to hear mine and i think thank y'all for inviting me in and i hope we can spend more time together if this uh works out and if you want to join me on uh youtube i got some videos on there And I'll put the link on my page on how to get there on Facebook. And then you can just scroll over there to YouTube and, and watch them as I post the video. But see, the, as I said the other day, pulling up dirt to the, to the corn or to the plants is a whole lot easier than having to hold each and it. I mean, that cocoa grass, every time I cut it off, the next morning, it's back up looking at me again. And this way, that dirt, pulling dirt up to your plants, it slows that cocoa down. It takes a while, but it'll finally maneuver out of that dirt. But it takes a while. And by the time it sticks its head back up, you're able to till it again and pull dirt up to it again. And then, therefore, it'll be blocked out. I know I've pulled up, I've dug up, one of them uh, a grass, the cocoa, and it would be long as your hand down in that dirt. Because every time you'd cover it up, it'd grow a little bit more through that dirt. i never seen grass like that that can grow in the dirt. In the darkness is what I'm saying, not without light. But you know, I guess, no, I know. That's the way old devil is all the time because he stays in darkness. So anyway, I thank y'all for coming. It's been a glorious day in the Lord. And I hope and pray y'all's day is blessed as mine is today. Thank y'all in Jesus' name. Amen.